I put up on Canvas, uh, just to remind you about the extra credit, if you came in a little bit late, there's some extra credit. Uh, you can check out the Canvas, it has a brand new extra credit item. And again, it's about reading the, the college newspaper and, and such. So you can check that out on Canvas now. Okay, back to what we were doing a moment ago. Um, I had put in a plugin to add a cool uh, WordPress, I mean a cool Instagram feature to my site. Now, every plugin will be a little different. It'll have different purposes. It'll have different setups and all that good stuff. So you'll have to explore each of your plugins to see how they work specifically. Uh, let's go back to look at something here. If you go back to dashboard, if you're not at the dashboard, let's go back to dashboard and let's go back to the Instagram feed plugin. Since that's the one we've got installed, the Instagram Instagram feed plugin, I'm going to look again at display your feed. Um, this is reminding you here. Copy and paste the following short code directly into the page, post, or widget where you'd like the feed to show up. So a moment ago, we created a brand new post and we copied this little bit of code. It's called a short code. We pasted this little code into the post, and then the post was visible on my site because right now I have not changed the default of my site. My site is again a blog style of site. So it appeared there. Now if I add a new post, it's going to push this one lower. That's the nature of posts, that these will, the newest one will push the older ones down. So I, I might not want that. I want it to be maybe a little more static. So we have two other ways in a page, but that requires that you create a brand new page and then set the setting under reading. Remember that part of the assignment last week. Well, let's look at the third way. This is brand new, widgets. So we'll do the lecture on widgets. These are found under appearance, widgets. I'll make notes in a moment, but let's go look at appearance widgets for the notes widgets areas of your design aka theme or template areas of your design where you make features appear oftentimes plugins. These areas are usually a sidebar or footer or header. So a sidebar is an area on the left or the right of your website. So there's an area on the side. We've also got header or footer, that's obvious, someplace at the top or someplace at the bottom of your website. So widgets are the areas where you're putting the plugin. So right now I've got this, this Instagram plugin, and maybe I want it to always appear in the footer. I want all my Instagram photos to always be at the footer, or maybe on the sidebar. Well, I'd need to identify um, my area in the widget screen and put it in there. At the moment, we are all using the if you're using the storefront theme, you should have then on this screen here an area as a sidebar, as footer column 2, 3, 4, and 1. Because of this theme, these are the possible places, and then below header, these are the possible places in the current design where I can put a widget, like my Instagram feed. These are the possible places of my design. If I was in a different theme, let me just show you this. I'm going to go back. Don't do this, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to 2019. I'm activating 2019. Now, when I refresh this, these are the places where I, I only have one footer. On, on the 2019 theme, it only has space for widgets to appear in the footer. So based on the theme, you're going to have different widget areas. So once again, I'll switch back to storefront, refresh that. Storefront has a sidebar below the header, footer, one, two, three, four. So making a note on that, depending on your theme, make it nice and big, depending on your theme, 
you have various widget areas where you can apply the widget, the plug-in feature. So the short answer for the moment is that we are locked into, based on the theme, where we can put a, a plug-in, aka widget. The long answer is I could write some custom code. I can write some HTML custom code to create my own area in the design where I want to put something exactly where I want. But that again requires to go over to the theme editor where it says, hey, be careful here, you're about to edit some hardcore settings and code of your site. And then it's okay, here it is, there's your code, write whatever you want. Um, we did three weeks of coding, and honestly, none of us are pros yet, um, unless you ta have taken other classes. So I would not try to go through the route of editing the theme editor code. But if you know what this look, what this is, and how to edit it, great. Go in and go to the perfect spot, write your code, and then you will be able to sort of like create your own areas of the design. The great thing about WordPress is that it's based on themes. But the bad thing about WordPress is that it's based on themes, meaning that if I selected a theme with six areas, those are the six areas that I have, the end, unless I want to do the hardcore coding to change it. Well, maybe I'll just go with a different theme that does have the seven areas that I want and the right type of design and so forth. And I can still customize a theme pretty well based on the customized screen. But if I want like the full power, I go to the theme editor. I believe I've mentioned before that not only do I teach classes at various colleges, I'm also part of a company that we do this for clients. I've been doing web design on the side since about 2001. That was a little while ago. And I've been doing web design for many clients over the years. And when we get hired by a client to make them a WordPress website, we tell them there's three routes you can take. The first route is you can hire us. We will set up your WordPress. We'll set up a theme and we'll customize it based on the customize button. Okay, the second level is you'll hire us, we'll set up a WordPress, we'll set up a theme, and then we will extensively go into the code and then fully customize it so that no one else has the same theme that you have based on that. And the third route is we will install the basic WordPress and we will create a brand new theme from scratch with all of the code completely original. Three levels. One is affordable, one is a little less affordable, one is expensive. And we tell them, don't even hire us for the expensive one. You've got a budget, don't hire us to create a completely custom theme. Hire us to do the one in the middle, to start with a theme, customize it, and for the rest of the budget, hire us to do your photos or your social media or your YouTube or whatever. Don't blow your whole budget on a completely custom site that no one else has. Because I can take the theme right now of Storefront and even though the customized screen lets me change some of it, if I know the code, I will be able to customize it way more than what the customized screen allows. But I don't want to have to code in how does the footer work, how does the header, the sidebars, all of that. That's way too much work and expense. And we tell them that when they hire us, go for level two. It's the most economical for you. All of that is to say here that, OK, the, the client hired us. They want a certain type of site. We've started to set it up. We want this feature to show off their Instagram posts about their products. This particular theme has six areas. I'm going to randomly pick under the footer number four, if you open it up with the little triangle here. Widgets added here will appear in column four of the footer. From the left side, available widgets. To activate a widget, drag it into a sidebar or click it. To deactivate, drag it or delete it. So from the left side, we're going to drag, I would like to display audio or play audio in column four. Or I would like to put a calendar in column one or a gallery or whatever. So based on the plugins, Based on the themes, I will have a variety of available widgets. Let's see what else. Recent comments, search, video. I have a variety of, of items here. 
But um, I guess the one that we need is custom HTML. Let's drag custom HTML and drop it into column four. It's okay, write some HTML here. I still have copied, I guess not. I had the short code, what was the short code? Instagram dash feed or something. Let me just get it. One moment. Yeah, Instagram dash feed. Let's type this. So I've added an HT a custom HTML widget to column four. It says write some HTML code here. If I know HTML code, I can write whatever code I want. CSS also works there, I believe, and I think also some JavaScript. So I can write a bunch of code. Let's see how this one works here with the Instagram balloon feed plugin thing. I copied in the code that they gave me into a custom HTML widget. I dropped it into column four. I made changes. Make sure you save at the bottom. I will go visit site. I'm going to go look down at the bottom where my footer is at. There it is. Does not look amazing, but I'll further customize it. So this particular theme has columns four, three, two, one. And in the fourth column, I plugged in that code that the plugin is telling me to do. So, and now on my footer, wherever, wherever other page they go to, my latest 20 Instagram photos show up there. Did that work for you? Anyone having trouble? Does it not display those? Instagram items at the bottom. Out of curiosity, okay, we've got sidebar, below header, footer. Uh, I'm going to randomly put it in other weird areas. Let's see what happens. Below header, below header. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab a custom HTML widget, drop it in under header, and just paste in the same thing. It's going to look really weird. But I just want to see where it looks like. Because this says widgets added to this region will appear beneath the header and above the main content. That look like a little really weird. But this theme is giving me a variety of places where I can add <coughs> widgets. I'm kind of forcing in a widget that is very visual, so it's going to probably mess up my design a lot. But let's see what it looks like. I'm going to refresh that. So here's the header up here. Here's the widget in action, and then after the widget is my main content. Kind of interesting. <coughs> Let's do this. Instead of, I'm still here in the, um, in the below header. Instead of that, you can write some HTML here. Remember, h1, hello world. with some styling. So if any of this looks familiar, I'm writing some HTML plus some CSS. This widget's purpose is for you to write any valid HTML, plug it into some widget area, and that's one way that you're customizing your website. We'll look at many more as we go on. If you want to try this out as well, if you remember some HTML or CSS from before, try writing it out. Uh, JavaScript should also work here, I believe. I think if you want to throw in some JavaScript, you have to first put the script tag. You usually don't do it this way, but um, just to play with it. I'm just showing here that this custom HTML widget added to a widget area can give you a lot of features. Maybe I want to display a video. There was a widget on the left side that said video. So I drop it from the left side into one of the widget areas that I want. I read perhaps what it tells me how to use it. 
I probably have to copy a link to a YouTube video into that video um, widget, and then I've got a video playing on my home screen. So the great thing about plugins and widgets is there's so many of them. The bad thing about plugins and widgets is that there's so many of them. Which is the right one? Which is the one that makes more sense? Which one does what I need it to do? Which one makes sense to me when I try to use it? The great thing is that you can experiment, try one out, I don't like it, remove it. Try a different one, that one's way better, keep it. I'm gonna refresh. So the JavaScript worked, it said hello. And at the top here it says hello world in pink. So yeah, that's me just kind of doing some advanced coding there. That's part of the reason why the first few weeks was a little bit of coding. There was no feature built into WordPress to make a pop-up happen that says, hello, welcome to my site. This pop-up was one of the things we did in our quick crash course on JavaScript. And even though WordPress is very visual, drag and drop stuff, if you know some HTML, some CSS, some JavaScript, this is a way for you to further customize the project. This is all three at once here. We've got some HTML, the hello world. We've got some CSS, background color pink. We've got some JavaScript, simple pop-up that says a message when they visit your site for the first time. And that's because I'm tapping into the power of widgets based on your theme. You might have different widget areas. Based on your theme, it may recommend more plugins. You are free to browse around for plugins to improve your site. Plugins are the way to further customize your site. Uh, this, this screen about these widgets, I recommend that you kind of browse it around, browse around it and see how it works. Like, how does this gallery work? And then drop it into footer three, see how it works. Um, you can explore that on your own. I just want to show you the screen, how it works. I've added this stuff. Maybe I no longer want something in a um, in a footer Let, let's just say as an example watch this if I drop audio over here if I no longer if I no longer want a a widget in a widget area there's two ways to remove it what do you think one way is to remove a widget delete easy but the other way that you might do instead is once you fill in all of this custom stuff and if you click delete, it deleted all of your customization. This custom code that I wrote here, I don't really want to delete it. I want to turn it off, but I don't want to delete it. If I delete, this will go away. So instead of clicking on delete on a, on a plugin, you can do this. On the left side, you've got available widgets. This opens and closes. And then you've got an area below that called inactive widgets. Drag widgets here to remove them from the sidebar, but keep their settings. So maybe I do want to use this later, but I don't want to delete it. Instead, I want to drag it over to the inactive widget area. Don't, don't drag it back to the available widgets. That's the same as deleting, basically. You want to drag it instead over to the inactive. So you'll still have it. You still have your customization. You can drag it back if you need it later. Putting that on the notes. The best thing, uh, best tip, experiment with the widgets and add them to different widget areas to see what features you can unlock. Instead of deleting a widget, you should probably 
put it under inactive widgets so you don't lose the customization. That makes sense any questions so far let's look at the final thing for the day how to transfer your WordPress site from this room to home we've done some work in WordPress right now and if we come back next week and continue we have to start over the site remember these computers erase everything uh, if you're doing this at home, of course, your computer remembers, unless you delete MAMP, it remembers everything that you did. Our computers don't. There is a way to make a copy of your WordPress website to take it with you. Because unfortunately, it's not simply, I'm going to copy this WordPress folder to my flash drive. That's not going to work because your WordPress site also has a database and the database is not in that folder. Remember when you went over to um, PHP my admin to make your to make your database, you cannot just copy and paste that onto your flash drive. So your WordPress site is made out of all of the files in the folder as well as the database. We need to package all of that together to take it home with us. Wouldn't you know it? There's a plugin to let you do that. There's a plugin to transfer your site from place to place. So one use case is I work on the project in here in class and I want to take it home to keep working on it at home. Or you're at home working on your project at home and you want to bring it here to work on it. Or this has happened to me a lot. I'm hired by a client to work on their WordPress website and I want to make a copy of their website from the real internet down into MAMP so I can me mess with it, figure out how it works, fix it all up, and then re-upload it to the internet. All of those use cases will work in what we're about to learn here. Using a backup or iArchiving plugin, you can make a copy of, the, of all the files and database of a site so that you can transport it. There's lots of plugins that do this. Here's the one I recommend. Duplicator plugin. Just like many plugins, there's a free version and a paid version. I almost always use the free version it works great. If you've got a really big website with lots of images, lots of videos, then the paid version works better. It's more efficient and such. But you should be able to use this free one to do what we're about to do here, to take your work with you. Because if you liked what you did so far today and want to take it home, that's, that's what we want to do. So let's add a new plugin. It was a little while ago. Remind me, how do I add a new plugin to my website? Plugins add new. <coughs> Let's go to our plugins screen to add a new plugin. And at the top right, we'll search duplicator. I get 57 results. The one, the only one that I can vouch for that I've used for years is this one right here, Duplicator by Snap Creek. Part of the assignment when you when you need to pick your own plugin, um, is you need to tell me what the name of your plugin is and the author. Who was this created by? When you do your assignment, you have to note the name and the author. Because there's lots of plugins out there, and unfortunately, a lot of them have the same name because one plugin gets popular and someone else borrows or tries to jump on the popularity and they'll call theirs something similar. So, to, to differentiate them, you also need to know the uh, author. This is the one we want here, so click install. 
and then activate. <clears throat> Install and activate. As I said earlier, when you install a new plugin, you have to kind of hunt for it. Um, usually you will see plugins installed, maybe this one calls it manage instead of settings. And on the left side, I get a brand new icon. It's like gear thing, duplicator. Interesting that it doesn't add itself after the last one. I don't know if it's alphabetical or whatever. They just said we're first. But on the left side, we have a brand new item, duplicator. Just click on duplicator. So let me give you the big idea of what we're about to do, and then we'll do it step by step. We're using the duplicator plugin to create a package. This package will compress everything that your website is into one zip file, including the database. It will also give you a special file to re to resurrect it. Um, when the process goes through, then we download it and we have then a perfect copy of our website. So the step by step of it is from this screen here, let's click create new. There's a bunch of settings that we can set all of the defaults will work just fine. 99% of the time. This is going to put a date and the name of your site. You can change it if you want, just leave it how it is. Nothing of this you also need to change usually. Just click next. So no changes here. Notice we have step one, step two, step three. Step one, no changes. Step two, it's going to scan your site to see if it finds all of the pieces of your site. Everything seems to be good. The server is working fine. WordPress is working fine. So the server is localhost. It found my files, 51 megabytes. It found the database completely, 2 megabytes. Okay. If you have a really big site, it does recommend to go to Duplicator Pro. And from experience, it has worked. I've dealt with some clients that have like thousands of files on their site, and the, and the Pro one works. For us, the free one should work. Okay, let's click Build. So this is going to scan your folder, grab every piece of your site, grab the database. Depending how complex your website is, it may take a little bit or it may take longer. Mine took 11.79 seconds. Did any of you go faster than that? How much did you get? 10.05. 10.05. There you get 10.6 or Just kidding. So, Depending on how complex your site is, this might take a little bit or a long time. I've had some that do take like 45 seconds, 60 seconds when it's a bigger, bigger site. Okay, what we need to do here then is, this is going to give us two files. The zip file where all the 50 megabytes have been compressed down to 18, and the installer file to bring it back to life. We need both of those. Now I notice that when I click on the one-click install, it doesn't always work because it's a pop-up blockers or something. So I would just be safer here. Click to download the installer, click to download the archive. These two files that I'm, quote, downloading, even though I'm not really on the internet, these two files that I'm downloading, depending on your browser, I want to put them on my flash drive and take them home with me, if you want to keep a copy of today's work. If you don't for next week, that's fine. You can install the whole site again and start again. That's OK. But if you want to take this with you, you can probably email it to yourself or upload it to your Google Drive from the college. But I clicked on the installer. Do I want to open or save it? I want to save it. And then I'll click on the archive. That pops up. Do you want to open it or save it? I want to save it. It's probably going to run the security scan for a moment. It'll download somewhere. Running security scan, so just keep waiting. <coughs> I 
Okay, so, uh, yeah, just keep waiting on that. Finish downloading. There we go. When both of them have said finish downloading, you can, uh, you can open the folder. This, I think this downloads to the desktop or maybe the downloads folder, wherever it downloads. That's why I click open folder. There it is. It went to the downloads folder. So my site right now has been um, downloaded like this. You should have two files. One is this installer file, which will which will unzip it for you and go through an installation process. And one is the zip file. You'll have the, the date and the name of your site plus a bunch of other stuff. Dot zip. So these two files are what I need to take home on my flash drive. And what I like to do is I like to create a folder, putting the date. I would recommend create a folder and then put both of those files into the folder. You need them both. You need the whole zip file with every picture, every plugin, every database entry, and the resurrection file. So both of these into the folder, and then that folder, I'm going to put it on my flash drive. Now there is a little bit of a, of a process, well how do I bring my site back to life? I'm going to do that as a lecture next time, but I will put into Canvas how to return a dupli duplicator, a WordPress dupli duplicator site. Let's see, I'm going to find the perfect answer. Um, Duplicator plugin. We're going to do a lecture next time how to bring it back to life. <coughs> but I want to give you the link about if you want to try it on your own. If you want to do it. If not, you can just wait until next time. There are some instructions, some steps how to bring it back to life. You just don't double click the installer file and it comes back to life. There is a little bit of a setup. So I'll show that to you next time. But Mm -hmm. Did you point out that they're, they're going to need the, or their username and password? That's kind of obvious if you want to log back into your, into your site. I know, but with the duplicator, uh, can it can't be... Well, actually, no, because it, cre it can create a new one. Never mind. Yes. Okay, I'm going to put this link into Canvas if you want to, on your own, try to resurrect the site. If you, if you don't, that's okay. We'll do it together next time. Call this how to resurrect your duplicator site. We're not at a point that you have to work on your site every single week, right? We're kind of jumping to different topics. so. If you can't do this on your own, that's okay. We will have a lecture on that together, um, how to do it, because it, it's not just double click and it starts. You have to do a little setup. If you want to read that on your own, you could, but we'll have the lecture together. And this is going to be a valuable thing to do because, again, what if I want to take my project from home and bring it in here to work on it? You use Duplicator at home, copy it to your flash drive, bring it here. Then we'll see how to resurrect it. If today, what you did today, you want to keep and take home, you need to use Duplicator to make a copy and then take it home and then resurrect it following the steps there. We'll do it together next time. Another case, what if I'm working, what if I got hired by someone and they want me to work on their WordPress website? I'm not going to just log into their, you know, victorsbakery.com on the internet and start messing with it. It's going to be live. Everyone's going to see the changes. I might break something on a live site. I would make a copy of that live site with Duplicator, <coughs> download it into MAMP, 
and use it in MAMP. Again, how to use it again, we'll do that next time. I'm going to keep you in suspense. So as long as you were able to use the duplicator plugin to make these, these items here and download them, you're good. If you needed help with that, we'll have some lab time now. Uh, you'll have time to start to work on your assignment due by Friday. Remember, I changed up a little bit of the details. Make sure you check the details to get the full credit about the plug-in assignment. We'll have some time to work until you need it, until about 4.30. Lab time tomorrow also, 4.30 to 6.30, and Friday, 12.30 to 3. General questions on anything? All right, if you want to get the extra credits of printing out your banner in color, you can do so. If you want to do the extra credit of reading the articles, you can do so. Don't forget to sign in if you didn't sign in up on the sheet right over here, legibly. And we'll have some lab time if you need it.